What's so special about December 16th, 2020? And why we won't have a date like this until 2025? In order to answer this question, we're going to need to know a little bit about the Pythagorean theorem and Pythagorean triples. So basically, the Pythagorean theorem says that if you have a right triangle with legs A and B and hypotenuse C, we have that A squared plus B squared is C squared, or that C, the hypotenuse, is the square root of A squared plus B squared. And some common Pythag triples are 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, and 8, 15, 17. Those are some good ones to know and memorize. And there are also some special properties of these Pythagorean triples. So if all the numbers in a Pythagorean triple are multiplied by a number, it's still a Pythagorean triple. So for example, in 3, 4, 5, if we multiply by 2 to each of the legs and hypotenuse of the triangle, we get the Pythagorean triple 6, 8, 10. And we can verify that that also satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. Also, for example, we can multiply it by 3 to get the Pythagorean triple 9, 12, 15. Similarly, we can also multiply it by 4. So 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 4 is 20, to get the Pythagorean triple 12, 16, 20. And again, similarly, we multiply by 5 to get the Pythagorean triple 15, 20, 20, 20. And this is a very useful fact that it's very important because it tells us that with one Pythagorean triple, we can generate infinitely many more Pythagorean triples. And this helps us see that there are actually an infinite number of Pythagorean triples. Okay, so now let's look for ways to calculate Pythagorean triples if the smallest number is odd. Okay, so the smallest number is odd, then we know it's going to be a Pythagorean triple. So basically, we see here that these are all Pythagorean triples, all of them, 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, 9, 40, 41, 11, 60, 61, and we can continue, 13, 84, 85, 15, 112, 113, 17, 144, 145, 19, 180, 181, and we can continue, I can continue more and more. So you might ask, how am I calculating these so fast? Of course, I'm not squaring each of these numbers and then taking the square root of them and then think, oh, it's 85, because that would take way too long. Instead, I'm using a very special trick. Basically, the trick is, let's take 9, 40, 41, for example. We square 9, so we do 9 squared equals 81. Then we divide by 2 to equal 40.5. So then the Pythagorean triple will just be 9, this number that we got when we divided by 2, minus 0 0.5, so 40. And then we do this number plus 0 0.5, so 41. So the number after 40. And this is a Pythagorean triple. Similarly, for example, with 11, 60, 61, we can do 11 squared equals 121. Then we can divide by 2 to get 60.5. And then we know that 11, 60.5 minus 0 0.5 is 60. So 11, 60, 61 is a Pythagorean triple. So as you can see, we can generate many Pythagorean triples using this property. And there's a Pythagorean triple for every odd number, three or more. So there's no Pythagorean triple for one, unfortunately. But for all of them greater than three or more, there's a Pythagorean triple. And also, from this property, we can also multiply, as we learned in the previous page, we can multiply each of the legs and hypotenuse by some number to generate even more Pythagorean triples. So for example, from this Pythagorean triple 5, 12, 13, we can also generate new Pythagorean triples like 10, 24, 26, etc. So just because there's Pythagorean triples with the smallest number odd, there are also Pythagorean triples with the smallest number even, and the smallest number uh, so on, etc. Okay, so now we can also find Pythagorean triples that they have the smallest number of multiple of 4. So for example, we have 8, 15, 17, 12, 35, 37, 16, 63, 65, 20, 
197, and so on. And I can continue. But there's a trick, just like the previous one, that we can use to calculate it. So the trick is, basically, let's take 12, 35, 37, for example. We divide 12 by 2 to get 6. We square that number to get 36. So then the price of going triple is just 12, comma, 36 minus 1, so 35, comma, 36 plus 1, so 37. Similarly, we can also do 16 divided by 2 equals 8. We can square 8 to get 64. And then a Pythagorean going triple would be 16, comma, 64 minus 1, which is 63. And then we do 64 plus 1, which is 65. So this is another Pythagorean triple. Okay, so now there's some other Pythagorean triples too that are not under the first two categories. And, but there's a general form for expressing all Pythagorean triples, including the ones on the previous page. So basically, there's something called primitive Pythagorean triples. So for primitive Pythagorean triples, they basically are the form m squared minus n squared, 2mn, m squared plus n squared. So this right here, they form a Pythagorean triple. So basically, that means any pi primitive Pythagorean triple, you might be asking, what does primitive mean? It basically means that all the numbers are relatively prime to each other. So all numbers that have sheer no common factor between all three of the Pythagorean terms. So generally, all Pythagorean triples can be expressed in the form k times the quantity, k times n squared minus n squared, k times 2m, k times n squared plus n squared. So generally, all Pythagorean triples can be expressed in this form because we can take a primitive Pythagorean triple, a Pythagorean triple with the three side lengths that share no common factors, and we can multiply each of those side lengths, each of the legs and hypotenuse by a constant k to get this new Pythagorean triple, the general kind. So for example, for example, in this Pythagorean triple here, 20, 21, 29, we have, well, we have that if m is equal to 6 and n equal to 4, we have 6 squared minus 4 squared equals 20. 2 times 6 times 4 equals 48. And m squared plus n squared, so 6 squared plus 4 squared, which is going to be equal to 52. And as you can see, this satisfies a Pythagorean triple. Okay, so now let's move on to the proof of the Pythagorean triple where the smallest number is odd. So basically, we just say a is 2n plus 1. Then we square 2n plus 1 to get 4n plus squared plus 1. So this is a general form. And then from here, we can see that b will just be equal to, by our rules, 2n squared plus 2n. And c, by our rules, will be 2n squared plus 2n plus 1. But then from here, we know that a squared will be equal to 4n plus squared plus 1 plus 1. And b squared will be equal to this quantity. And I won't go too much into the algebra, but you can verify for yourself that a squared plus b squared will be equal to the value of c squared. So we can see that this does form a Pythagorean triple. And there's also proof for the second property. And if you're interested in seeing the proof and reading it for yourself, you can pause the video. So for the, this property, we just do the a is 4n divided by 2. We square it, subtract 1. We square add 1. Then again, we square a a squared plus b squared, we add them together, we verify it's equal to c squared, and we see that it's indeed true. So we're good. Okay, so back to our original question. December 16, 2020, the Pythagorean trait. What is so special about this? Well, we can see that 12, 12 16, 12, 16, 20, these three numbers are Pythagorean triples. And we can see that it's actually 3, 4, 5 times 4. So it's the Pythagorean triple 3, 4, 5 with all of its side lengths multiplied by 4. So 12, 16, 20. And we can verify it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. 2. So that's what's so special about the upcoming day very recently at the time of this video being uploaded. 
Also, the last Pythagorean trait was August 15, 2017, because you have A1517, which is a Pythagorean triple. So we can also verify the Pythagorean theorem that this is true. So when is the next Pythagorean trait? Let me know in the comments down below. And there's only one more date remaining in the century. So this is definitely a special date. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe. And also turn on the notifications so you'll be notified whenever a video is uploaded.